circuit of a tone generator. The first results, by the way, and I was working during the past weeks on a kind of synthesizer. This is more or less the schematic that I early showed. The complete circuit with uh, the copper uh, plates, knobs, etc. Finally, I had I have made this circuit, and the, the good thing of this circuit is that uh, it does not have parasitic oscillations when uh, there is no push on whatever way on the keyboard. So Very high frequency here. No parasitic oscillations, you can see it on the scope. The signal is completely clear and when I push one of the keyboards we have a frequency. This is the frequency at the moment. Lower frequency, more space here in between. Uh, the waveforms on the scope. And I will try to give a somewhat better overview anyway. At first the circuit. Uh, I've now made the circuit with PMP transistors and there is a special reason for that. Because uh, <coughs> I wanted to keep the impedance of all these uh, keyboard uh, knobs as low as possible. That meant that I had to say in a certain way connect it to ground, though of course they cannot completely be connected to ground because there must be a, a certain resistance to make the oscillator work. So this is the setup where this problem of parasitic oscillations etc is cured and the reason is that here are now the knobs. The, the, the tones on the keyboard when you press this button that's for instance here uh, it has a low impedance to ground via a 1k resistor so that's a quite low impedance that's okay. Uh, you don't have to um, worry about hand effect. When such a knob has a high impedance uh, up to another position or up to ground, there is hand effect and you can surely hear, for instance when you touch such a knob, you can hear, not in this case but in another case, uh, with the NA555 chip, you can hear noise, kind of strange sounds, but here that's no problem. And that's the reason why I made it this way. So, pan over somewhat. Amplification factor must be approximately 250 of the used transistors, PMP transistors, BC557. Or the BC556B, both transistors are PMP transistors and in fact the circuit is extremely simple. You can find this multi vibrator, a stable multi vibrator, on many places in old documents from the 1920s, 1930s, 1950s, etc. Uh, you can take the signal out here at the collector or here at the collector or here or here. Of course we have now two multi vibrators and the strange thing I have to study that further is that when I push um, uh, one of the knobs on the keyboard here and uh, the other corresponding knob on the keyboard the sound differs anyway. That's not, that was not my aim. And 
and you can set by the way the frequency perhaps it's interesting to show I only have one hand because I have my camera in one in, in one hand anyway uh, So when I touch the, that knob of the other oscillator, the frequency goes down and I have to study why that happens. I had not expected that. My first idea was to mix two frequencies together so that you could get a kind of beat frequency, a kind of vibrato, vibrato, anyway. I'm surely going to make a vibrator, vibrato circuit here. Anyway, uh, well, <coughs> back to the schematic. Uh, you can make, of course, in the first oscillator and in the second oscillator completely the same. You can use, in that case, the same capacitors. So, in this uh, first oscillator capacitor one is one microfarad of course bipolar 470 nanofarad etc etc it goes to a lower um, uh, capacitor values that means that the frequency goes up and when you study the circuit you see that I've used here different Quite, quite different capacitors. My idea was to uh, make two nodes here, two knobs or three knobs uh, working on the same frequency, but uh, like I told earlier that did not work properly. When I push one knob I can set both knobs here To, uh, to the same frequency, but when I push them both, there is no kind of mixing. It could have everything to do with the way that I made it here, and I'm surely gonna study that. Uh, I made, say, a kind of coarse way of uh, putting the two signals together by using here two capacitors of the same value, uh, 220 nanofarad, mixing them both into that 1k potentiometer that's here. But uh, anyway, it had not the right result. So interesting, interesting issue to do more experiments. No problem with that. So that was more or less all to tell regarding the say the base oscillator. Perhaps it's interesting to show the waveforms here. They are kind of square waves. And And the reason that, you, that the square wave looks this way is that there is a different uh, uh, time pause. This is 100 nanofarad, but compared to the, uh, the capacitor that is switched on, for instance when it is 50 nanofarad or 10 nanofarad, the duty cycle differs very substantially and you can see it here. This is not a very good example but anyway here you could see the different duty cycle and I've used by purpose here 100 nanofarad capacitors to keep the whole um, circuit simple this is of course a square wave kind of square wave a tri triangle wave has another sound a sine wave has another sound and that brings uh, me to another issue that is perhaps interesting to tell 
and that there are two different basic different um, schematics to to generate a sound and one is an integrator and one is a differentiator I have in one of my books that explained uh, in uh, in my opinion in a, in a quite good way I couldn't find back the right page but here you see kind of basic generator for different wave shapes and here you see the combination of the capacitor and the resistor uh, in one situation it acts as a kind of um, differentiator I think here is a differentiator and there's also a position in this circuit where uh, it acts as an integrator So, schematics 1 revised, that's where this circuit is visible. Other interesting issue is mixing audio signals. I have to study that, especially in combination with the circuit that I'm showing now. Um, you cannot say, like I did it here, in this case, mix two audio signals in this far too simple way when you really want to mix them so that the properties of both uh, signals are uh, hold this is the right do thing to do P1 and P2 operate separately and due to the resistors here you have a real mixing of two different sounds two different inputs could be a sine wave input could be music um, whatever signal and this is the right way to mix two separate audio channels this resistor here is crucial so a lot to do, pen over somewhat, thanks for watching. The schematic as it is. And I have made also a sine wave oscillator that also has to function inside this uh, generator circuit, kind of synthesizer circuit but only the very, very first stage. So, let's finish with a sound.